is dying. Activists from around the world have realized that splashing famous paintings with food is actually resetting Earth's ecological clock. But sure. there's only a finite number of multi-million dollar paintings in which we can destroy. So if we want to get Earth's ecological clock back to the Big Bang where climate change doesn't exist, we're gonna have to destroy billions of paintings. Using AI tools, we can generate millions of unique, awesome famous paintings, Da Vinci paintings. We're this is actually fucking incredible. Absolutely. If AI art ever had a purpose, it would be for this. We're gonna need millions of these if we want to reset Earth's environment. We could do a Banksy. Here we are. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. The more we destroy our history, the more we progress. Here's the Earth. All right, next. This one's for the bees. So far, we're making good progress. I'm already feeling the air beginning to change. Save planet Earth. I know this person's being snarky. I don't know to what extent they're deliberately misrepresenting the point of the protesting, but it's also a funny video. Dude, I want to help save the earth. There you go. Thank you. Of course, none of this would be possible without all these artists that have generated these beautiful works. Thank you. Oh yeah, guys, remember how when the um, when the Just Stop Oil people started th tossing soup cans onto whatever? Remember when that happened? And I was like, um. Uh, this is, this is about popularity, this, or sorry, this is about attention, this is about getting, like, people's eyes on it, and this is going to get them more attention than anything they've ever done before. At the time, Google Trends hadn't caught up because it was an ongoing event, but yeah, it got them so much more attention than anything they'd ever done. Every protest they've ever done paled in comparison to soup cans. So, uh, yeah, climate change is over. Uh, it's done. I'm just looking in the U.S. Let me check worldwide. Yeah, worldwide, same. This spike back here would have been, like, mostly a U.K. thing from the earlier protests, but, like, yeah. Oof. Wyoming? Yeah, I don't know. Emperor Tancred, thanks to Tier 2 sub. Watch Polymatter on YouTube, explains China perfectly. What is it? In December 1988, the leaders of China and... I think, I think I've actually seen this. I don't know if I want to watch a 21 minute video right now, though. China's Reckoning. I think I might have actually seen this before. I don't know how... slanted this is, exactly. It's all bad attention, though. Why do you think this protest event helps the cause when all it does is alienate people? It doesn't. The world is ending. Listen, man, people have self-immolated over this shit. Uh, the world is ending. The evidence is clear. Nobody's doing anything at this point. Literally, like, we're, we're just throwing shit at the wall. Literally. Uh, the, the problem, like, we're at a point right now where I don't think it's fair to complain about stuff like that. Because, I mean, what are you doing? You know? Like, we're, this isn't, like, a delicate issue or anything. It's the end of the world, and all the evidence anyone should ever need is on the table. So at this point, just getting people to pay attention and talk about it is probably worthwhile on its own. It's not a debate. Remember, this may be a debate channel, but not all forms of activism are debate, you know? Like, it's not like hippies were convincing anybody by chaining themselves to trees. Sometimes it's just about bringing attention to the issue. I saw someone say they should have given the soup to a homeless person. Yes, one soup can to one homeless person. That would have... remarkably... changed the fabric of climate change. What are we talking about? In the fall of 2021, Sachs launched Colin Broadcast with 12 million in Series A funding. All his paid cronies are pushing the same message of Russia's genocide. Jesse Singel, Jimmy Dore, Glenn Greenwald, Benjamin Norton, Michael Tracy, Brianna Joy Gray, and Matt Teeby. Why is Brianna Joy Gray in parentheses? Also, has Jesse Singel said anything like that? This is one of those NAFO people, so I don't know how well we can... Oh, there he is. Hey, champ, can you link with me anything I've said or written about Russia or Ukraine you disagree with? Tony Baloney, the point of chaining yourself to trees is not to financially hurt the companies who want to cut down those trees. It's to get news crews on you. Dude, everyone knows about climate change and old growth logging? Okay, Tony Baloney, then just die then. Then just perish. I don't, I don't know what to say. What do you... I, 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 I just... I don't, I don't understand what people's arguments are in this. It's not a debate, okay? D uh, black people doing sit-ins or blocking traffic during the civil rights protests wasn't them making a debate move. They weren't trying to convince people. They're just trying to get attention and awareness, you know? It's not always a debate. You know, 
people are, more people are talking right now about climate change because of the soup can. Good. Fine. The left has a lot of genocide deniers. Then they're not on the left. I'm suggesting direct action should be directed at oil companies and people with large vehicles. People with large... Tony Baloney, come on. People with large vehicles, direct action. What are you saying? Go firebomb every Hummer you see? Feel free to. What do you... Come on. Seriously? How are you going to... Sim like, sure. Uh, then do both. <laughs> that would... Uh, just firebomb a truck, retard. Two protesters were arrested after throwing tomato soup on a Van Gogh. Uh, look, I love a good protest. Did TikTok change its format recently? What the fuck am I looking at? What, what, what is this? What? I hate this. Before I get into it, I want to acknowledge that there's like a conspiracy theory out there that's saying that these people represent an organization that is actually funded by some oil heiress or something like that. And this whole situation was just... How do you full screen? What? Deployed to make climate what? activists look... Do I seriously have to look at this tiny... This tiny portrait view framed inside a, a double widescreen box? There's no full screen? Dumb. And if that's the case... Congrats. But given their past protest Zoom? efforts, I don't uh. think it is. I'm just so tired of ineffective protests. If you're trying to coordinate a protest, there's two things you really need to keep in mind. One, they take much, much longer than you think. The Montgomery bus boycott lasted over a year before the city did anything. And two, if you're not giving them a reason to make you stop, then your protest is empty. If you're protesting climate change and your goal is to have your government stop new licensing for oil drills and whatever, and, and your protest is to throw soup on paintings in a museum, then that might be effective because like your government will have to pay for the repairs in a lot of cases. There are two things wrong with this. Huh? One, just doing it once isn't good enough. Protests take much, much longer than you think. And two, the London National Gallery, where this tomato soup protest took place, is funded by a Swiss bank. Wait, 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 what? The, 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 the point of this is not the cost of cleaning the soup. The, 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 it is not, it has nothing to do with the cost of cleaning. It's about getting attention online. And they have been for 14 years. If you're not giving the government a reason to make you stop, they won't make you stop. Is this, is this guy suggesting that there is a hypothetical cost of painting damage that an individual could do that would make the government turn its back on the multi-billion dollar fossil fuel industry conglomerates that they've been working with for decades? Is he, is he suggesting that like, the way you do protests is to directly appeal to the government as opposed to their actual purpose, which is to get popular support. He does realize that protests aren't about directly convincing the government, right? They're about getting the people on your side. Like, the anti-war Vietnam protests weren't about literally convincing the government to stop. They were about getting so many people on the side of the anti-war protests that eventually it became politically unpopular to continue the war. I know none of this was funny and I'm a comedian, so it should have been, so I'll end this segment on a joke. Why did the chicken pile a bunch of electric scooters? Nope. Man, that, that shit. Oh, God. Is the idea for Just Stop Oil to keep slashing paintings in car dealerships until normies should beg the government to start taking action to curb oil and gas subsidies? The goal is to just get so many people talking about all of this that it becomes like an issue for discourse. That's it. It's, you have to understand, pr getting attention to an issue is like uh, rolling a snowball down a hill, okay? The more attention is given to an issue, the more people talk about it, the more people do stuff about it, the more likely it is that in the future, more exacerbating incidents will take place. That there will be more like, uh, you know, like more, more rocks thrown in the pond. The idea is that like you kick the ball rolling until like everyone's in a giant tumult over, like, think of what Republicans do with the gay grooming panic, huh? 
right? This wasn't even a thing in the in its current form. This was not a thing three years ago. The idea that like drag queen, panic, trans, child, blah, blah, grooming. Th this is a totally manufactured thing. So how do you start it? Well, you take a couple of high profile incidents and you milk as much attention from them as you can, knowing that after doing so, you make it a public issue and that encourages other people to make it their own thing. And now they have successfully like astroturfed this entire discourse in spite of no evidence to their points. They know how to do it. Is this useful if the attention is negative attention, though? Yes. Keep in mind, guys, the attention that uh, uh, protests, sit-ins, and traffic blocking during the civil rights protest, Scott, was also negative. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. died an unpopular man. The suffragettes back in the 1920s were also deeply unpopular uh, in broader media and discourse. It's not a debate. The point is not a debate. We're not debating. If it was a debate, then the optics would be much more important because the goal of a debate is to front an effective argument. But protests aren't about fronting an effective argument. They're about getting attention and support. And the attention sometimes, if you can get an overwhelmingly large amount of it, is desirable, even if uh, a lot of it is negative. Like, for example, think of how much negative attention all of these stupid PSYOP accounts get uh, from the right. Like all these um, detransitioners or Matt Walsh, who got a ton of negative attention for his What is a Woman documentary, and yet it's all part of the broader plan, right? Every step the fascists take, how unpopular is it? Massively so. Marjorie Taylor Greene is hugely unpopular broadly in this country and is very divisive. Has she been bad for the fascist movement in this country? No, because the fascists understand that even if something they do is broadly unpopular, um, it still serves to normalize certain topics and elements that, um, that they can later capitalize on. Even if something seems unpopular, that's not the be-all, end-all of its political viability. Sometimes, Putting forth something that's unpopular in its initial iteration can actually be a way of paving space for a more dignified or decent iteration of that idea to come forward. So, for example, Donald Trump to Ron DeSantis. Donald Trump is divisive and blah, 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 you know, uh, 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 and, 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 and sort of cuts up the, uh, the GOP. But Ron DeSantis, who is as, if not more, fascistic, uh, comes across as more presentable. Um... Donald Trump was so unpopular that he was a laughingstock through 2015, and then he was the president of the United States. Unpopularity is not the only issue here. Did we not learn from this? Did we not learn? The whole reason that Trump won in 2016 was in large part because the media kept giving him free publicity, because they treated him like a joke. Every time Trump would do something moronic or buffoonish or politically unviable, the media would swoop in to mock him for it. But that mockery gave him billions of dollars in free publicity, which he capitalized on and was eventually able to use to win the presidency. Um, and because a lot of people hated Hillary? Yes, a lot of people hated Hillary, but do you guys understand how negative attention can actually be good for some social causes? Let me put it this way. Which do you think would have been better for Trump? A ton of negative attention from the media, which got him the presidency, or if the media had ignored him altogether? You know the answer, right? 